Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and uh, welcome to another uh, broken G-Wagon video. Uh, we're in my uh, Snowden driveway here. We actually probably got about two feet of snow over the last couple weeks. And um, this thing was pretty much covered in snow. That's kind of why I'm only getting to it now. It's finally starting to melt here. So last time I went to go drive it, I started it up and uh, the thing just started pouring oil out all over the ground. And um, it's not actually the first time it's done it. it. It did it once before, but then it stopped. So then I, I was trying to figure out what was going on. And so it only seemed to do it when it was cold. So I had a quick look at it and um, it seemed to be coming from the oil filter housing. Um, so I did a little bit of research and at first I thought maybe it's the timing cover. I know that it's, these engines have problems with the timing covers leaking, but um, looking at, into it uh, a little further, um, I saw it coming out right below the oil filter. So this is the, uh, the new oil filter housing here that I've got. Um, and it comes just like this from Mercedes. It's about $300 Canadian. And where the oil is coming from is from this area right here. Now, it looks like there's some sort of a spring actuated plunger in there. And I don't know if it's a pressure relief thing or what it is, but it looks like it's supposed to bypass, the oil is supposed to bypass uh, from one ca cavity into another, maybe when it's cold. But in any event, it actually come, ends up coming out of this uh, seal right here. So I think there is a way to just replace this plunger, but um, in the seal. I saw another video of a guy doing that, but I, I couldn't find a part number for it. So I ended up just getting this whole thing. Um, so, and I don't know if there's a new oil filter in there or if I need to get a new one or just reuse the old one. I just did an oil change on this thing not that long ago. So the, uh, the oil filter is pretty fresh. So anyway, um, hoping to do this without having to take too much apart here. Um, as you can see, this is where, obviously this is where the oil filter sits. And we've got a bunch of these lines that need to come off. Um, I was hoping not to have to drain the coolant, but it looks like the coolant pipe is, sits right there. And that's kind of where it goes into the thermostat housing. So that might have to come off. So anyway, let's get this thing fired up and uh, I'll show you guys how much oil comes out of it. Um, it's kind of hard to see, you can sort of see in there, but it'll be easier for me to show you exactly where it's leaking once I have it taken apart. All right, so we'll get this thing fired up here. So we'll go ahead and uh, start getting these covers off. And this thing got kind of warm already from me running it. So the best uh, idea here is we want to get the fan out. Um, it's actually, it's, this fan's really easy to remove compared to some other uh, uh, fans. Um, there's a couple tabs here that hold it in place on top that kind of prevent it from sliding up. And then there's just a 10 mil bolt down the, at the bottom. 
Um, so you take the bolt out, you bend these tabs back. There's a couple zip ties usually that hold these uh, crossover hoses in place. And once you uh, take the bolt out, and then there's a plug just down on the, on the passenger side here, you unplug it, and, and then you can slide the, uh, the whole fan assembly out. That will give you a lot more space um, to work on the front of the engine here. So we'll go ahead and take the bolt out at the bottom, and then we can uh, get this fan out. All right, so just like that, the fan is out, and that gives us a bit more space here inside the engine bay to work. So what we're trying to do is we need to get to this area here. So we'll have to remove this intake pipe here, some of these crossover pipes. This is uh, your oil cooler pipes here. This is a power steering line that goes into the power steering pump right here. Hopefully we can just move it out of the way without having to disconnect it because I don't feel like dealing with the power steering fluid leaking everywhere. Um, and then once we get these lines out of the way, we should be able to hopefully get this housing out. So we'll start um, getting some of the stuff out of the way here now. So we'll undo this uh, intake pipe here. The bolt down at the bottom where it goes into the turbo. A bit of a pain to get to, and then there's an e torx um, that holds this pipe in place here. And then we'll also uh, get this intake pipe out. So these are the bolts that hold these oil lines on with the clips there. And then we'll get these bolts out here that hold them into place into the housing. And these are most likely going to leak everywhere as soon as we take them out. So you kind of want to have a, a rag or a, a drain pan down below. But the whole front of the engine is soaked in oil in it anyway from the hosing leaking everywhere. Yeah. And then there's a bolt down below here that holds the uh, power steering line in place. So we'll undo that, get it out of the way. Now it looks like on the housing itself there is a, um, a place for a pulley, for an idler pulley. So I think we'll have to take the serpentine belt off, which is uh, not a big deal.
take a little rag here and try to contain whatever oil comes out of these. Which isn't too, too bad. Just try to put them off to the side here, just so that they're out of the way. Hose clamp down on the on the turbo is a pain to get to to get the intake pipe off. I've had this pipe off before, so I kind of positioned the clamp so it's easier to remove next time. But it still it likes to move as you're trying to uh, take it off. side here Let's take this air box out So it looks like these coolant pipes are in the way. It looks like both coolant pipes are going to need to come off, which is a bit unfortunate, but unavoidable, unfortunately. So we're going to have coolant leaking everywhere. can to catch most of it.
bit of coolant coming out, not too bad. Kind of want to block these ports off so we don't get coolant in the oil. So we've got this uh, intake pipe coming off here. Power steering pipe is not in a good spot. We'll try to work around it here. So the next thing we'll do is we'll undo the thermostat housing. Uh, there's a looks like a temperature sensor on the thermostat that we need to take off. It's got a little safety clip there. Get this wire out. And there is an idler pulley on the. Uh, on the oil filter housing, so we'll get the serpentine belt off. We just need to pull the tensioner back and get the belt off. Looks like it might be like a 15 millimeter. That's a 14. So we've got the belt off. Now we can get the thermostat housing off. There's three bolts that hold it in place. They're uh, e Torx also. Let's see how much coolant we end up losing. I have a little bit of blue coolant, but might have to go get more. So far we haven't lost a lot, but I have a feeling that we're gonna lose quite a bit here as soon as we get this thermostat closing out. There's another hose that runs off of this main hose down, but if we take take a clip off here, we should be able to disconnect the housing from the hose. And that should hopefully give us a bit more space to work. 
There's a vacuum line here that runs to the wastegate on the turbo. Um, we can just pull it off the wastegate and then get it out of the way. I don't want to break this line. I know how expensive these plastic lines are for whatever reason. The last one I broke was like $100. Well, actually, there is enough space here to just kind of drop it down. I dropped the hose down and out of the way there. It's kind of pouring coolant out now, but anyway. So now we have a clear view of the housing. So this is where all the oil is coming out of. I wish I could start this thing right now to show you guys, but it actually wouldn't be too bad to start because all I need to do is hook up these oil lines. But this is uh, where the oil is coming from. So there's a few uh, Torx bolts that um, hold it in place here. We'll get these off, we'll get this pulley off so we can transfer it to the new one. And looks like there's a bolt here holding this coolant pipe in place. And that should be it. Pulley here is a T40. Get that off. Make sure it looks brand new. are fairly smooth. a bit more space to work. This one, the one on the driver's side is the long one here. Um, I don't know if I got all of them. Take a look at the new one there and see. They're 
actually looks like there's a plug here that we'll have to transfer over also. I don't know if it's for a different engine or what. So we've taken this one out. It looks like there's two more back here. So we've took this long one out now. So there should be two here. We took these four out. And that should be all of them. And of course, those two bottom ones, they're behind these oil lines. These look like they're uh, feed lines for the turbo. And they're held in place on the engine block here. So we'll have to take those off. Try to give you guys a better view here of what I'm dealing with. So we've got um, what we need to do is there's two bolts back here. Hopefully you can see it there. So these two lines right here, that's I'm assuming one's a supply, one's a return for the oil feed, or it could be coolant feed. I don't know if these turbos are water cooled also. But anyway, so they're held in, into the engine block right here with these uh, fittings. So we'll take these off. This one looks like it goes to the other side also. So we'll take, there's two bolts here, take those off. And then hopefully these lines will just slide out of the way and uh, give us access to those two bottom bolts that we need to get to. Got a long bolt and a short bolt holding the, the double line. Also, these are coolant lines. I want to be careful with these, they seem they might be kind of brittle, so we don't want to break them. We can kind of move them out of the way, and that should give us enough room to get to the uh, those bottom bolts. This bottom bolt has a large head on it, and it's a long one. This is bottom driver's side. And this is the last one on the bottom. And that should be all of them. So let's see if this thing comes off. Oh yeah, there we go. A ton of oil coming out. So here we are. So oil was coming out of here. So like I said, I think you might be able to just replace this, but I couldn't find uh, what the part number was for it or anything, so I got a whole new one.
so we'll get this off the gasket stuck to the engine there so we'll get that off and uh, get the new one in so there is this plug right here that we need to transfer over looks like it's an allen plug that one the new one didn't come with this hole plugged off um, so we'll transfer that over and uh, also might have to pull the oil filter out and put it in I don't know if I don't see a date stamp on this, so I don't know if this is original. It looks original, so let's uh, get it out of the way here. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pull this plug off right now. gasket is plugged off on the back side you can see but I don't know why it just didn't come with a new plug it's already pre-installed which is kind of strange let's clean this up a little bit There's a copper washer on it that you're probably supposed to replace, but I don't have one, so I'll just uh, put it in and just hope for the best. I mean, the top is just plugged off here. Um, can't really see if there's an oil filter in there. I think if, if I take this plug here out, I might be able to see in there. But in any event, I can change the oil filter after I get the housing back on the motor. So we'll get this old gasket out of the way here. probably break clean all the soil off because it's everything's soaked in oil now. Okay, looks decent. Make sure the mating surface is clean here where the o-ring goes. 
and we'll put this new uh, new housing in place. Okay, so we'll put this long bolt back in. That goes in behind the coolant lines on the bottom. And then this one is the one that came out last from the very bottom easy to identify because it was covered in oil And we'll put a couple of these top ones here just to hold it in place. We want to make sure we got all our bolts in before we tighten any of them. And that way we know all the holes are lined up. This was the very first bolt we took out on the top driver's side. I'll just snug them up and then tighten them by hand. Don't know the torque spec, but tight should be good. I don't know if there's a sequence you're supposed to do these in. I'm just going to go middle ones at first and then work my way out. I'm 
sure the Germans have some sort of a proper sequence for all of this. I don't know if it, any of it really matters. I guess we'll find out. We already forgot what bolt goes where, but if it doesn't reach, then it's the wrong bolt.
All right, so we've got the bolts figured out here now. These are our thermostat housing bolts. When you're taking this stuff apart, you want to keep track of them because they're all different. Tighten this up by hand because this is all plastic here. Connect our uh, vacuum line down to the wastegate. Okay, so we connect our sensor wire. Okay, now we can put the belt back on. It's on all the pulleys, so we're good. Now we can start uh, putting all these pipes back in. We connect the charge pipe here. Wipe down.
we want to make sure this is fully seated because that that one's actually under pressure so that's our pipe coming out of the turbo going into the intercooler so it's that sees boost so we got to make sure it's clamped on there if it's not it'll just pop off I think I'll use a 7 mil socket. where the 7 mil is so we'll just use the ratchet wrench that now we have our power steering line here we have our oil lines and then we need to get our air intake pipe back in we can clamp this coolant line back on And we have this long one that holds it in place down here. Okay, so we've got the power steering line back on here. 
now we can get our intake pipe on and then um, I just had a quick look see how much coolant I have I only have like less than half a gallon so I'm gonna have to run down to the store and get another jug I think I probably lost about a gallon so one more jug should be okay just clean this thing up a little bit So you want to make sure this thing's seated all the way on. And then tighten the clamp down. can uh, pull this cover off. Drop the bolt, of course. Oh, it does have a new oil filter, so don't even have to uh, reuse the old oil filter. It comes with a new one, so that's convenient. Put these lines back on. bolt went. It didn't sound like it fell all the way down. Okay, 
Okay, so now we'll put our uh, intake pipe back on. I mean, our air filter. Slide that back on. And we'll get our intake pipe back on here. Okay. That's pretty much that. Now I just need to get our fan back in. And then um, go get coolant. Need to secure this top rad hose also. Don't forget that. that so everything's back together oil lines are back on power steering line secured and back on didn't disconnect any of this so we should be good there we're probably low on oil too so I'll pick up some oil to add and um, yeah we'll pick it back up after uh, I get back from the store and then we'll fire this thing up make sure we got no leaks All right, so I picked up about uh, I picked up a gallon of uh, concentrates and a gallon of uh, distilled water. Uh, mixed the two, uh, put a whole gallon in, and about a half of the other one. So that's, I lost actually quite a bit of coolant, more than I thought. So anyway, now we can go ahead and uh, fire this thing up. It's all back together, and uh, let's see if we have any leaks. Hopefully not. stay steady um, I'm assuming it's going to drop after the thermostat opens uh, once it circulates through the whole system so I'll keep an eye on it 
add some coolant, add some oil as I need, and uh, hopefully that'll solve my solve my leaks for now. So if you guys have any questions uh, or any comments, please let me know. Thanks for watching. Uh, like and subscribe, and more videos coming. Uh, hopefully nothing else breaks on this uh, G63 for a while, but uh, lots of other stuff to work on. I've uh, got the Viper. I'm working on. I've got the uh, the blazer that I'm working on. I need to put a new uh, a new carpet and stuff in there that I ordered. So um, there'll be more videos coming. Thanks, guys.